Alrighty, so today we're going to explore a tool in Photoshop that has some really specific uses that are really great, uh, but is misunderstood or not understood at all by the vast majority of people that use Photoshop. And what we're going to use is the pen tool. Now, you can see that I'm in Lightroom right now, uh, because that's where the, the, I had the image stored that I'm going to use. And you can see the problems of other ways of trying to select this out of the background because it's an off-white mug on a basically white background. So I'm actually going to first, I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit on this in Lightroom, just so maybe when we get into Photoshop, I have a little better idea of where the edges are. So that's good. So let's go ahead and go up to Photo, Edit in Photoshop or Command or Control E. All right, here's our mug opened up in Photoshop. Yeah, you can see maybe it's slightly tilted, and uh, that's okay. Uh, we can rotate it later. First thing I'm going to do, just as a safety that I always do, is I'm going to duplicate the background layer, which is Command or Control J. So now we, you can see we have a second copy over in the layers. And again, you can see trying to select this out of the background is problematic. So if I use the magic wand tool and click, you can see that it's even though it did a pretty good job you can see it's it picked up some of the cup on either edge even if i hold down the shift key to add down to the bottom here let's see what you can see it just has trouble so that's not the answer now we could use one of the background eraser tools let's try that and see what happens give ourselves so here's the background eraser tool and if i kind of drag along that you see it has no idea where the cup begins and ends and there's also the magic eraser tool again we can try the same thing and you can see it just doesn't know what to do so those tools for separating this aren't really going to work well now we could certainly try using the lasso but that's going to be problematic as well because we're trying to to draw around this thing and you can see it's just not particularly accurate so let's cut to the chase and go right to the pen tool so here's the pen tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. So let's just go ahead and zoom in real close. Maybe not that close. That's beyond the resolution of the thing. Let's go. Uh, let's do it at 100%. All right. Now we can see the edges. And you can see where the problem is selecting because the edge here is barely different from the background. So with the pen tool, here's how it works. The pen tool creates something called Bezier curves. They are not bitmaps. They are actually a postscript or mathematical description of a line. Uh, we'll talk about the benefits of that later. So I'm going to start right up here with our first point. And I'm not just going to click. I'm going to click and then drag. And what that does is it puts these two handles. This is going to allow it to create a curve along here. So I can come all the way over here to another side and then just bend. I'm pulling and I'm bending along the edge and you can see it's starting to change direction here. Again, right there. See, as I pull it, see how I can bend this and I bend it right to the edge of the mug. Now I can come all the way down around here. I'll pick up this edge and you can see that doesn't match. So just start pulling until it matches the curvature of the cup. Now this one's pretty straight. We'll come all the way down to here. Put a little bend on that. And then I'm going to come right here on the beginning of the handle. And once again, see notice as I pull and, and pull along where it's go where it's coming from and where it's going to go. Uh, actually the, the fewer amount of points that you add, the smoother your curve's going to be. So then I just hold down the space bar so I can move the image in the screen. And let's come all the way out here. And again, see, it, it gives a straight line until we pull on the control handles. And again, notice this one is following where it's going to go. So let's come all the way down to here. And some of this is subjective. You can, you can, get, you can cut into your piece a little bit. Uh, if you lose a pixel or so, it's not going to matter. That's pretty good because you can also move these after the fact. So let's come all the way down to here. Actually, that one, by default, did pretty well. Actually, no. Let's bring that back. We really didn't need to put much of a control handle in that at all. And then all the way down to here. Again, you see a little bit of a curve in this handle. It's not a symmetrical handle exactly. 
which makes it more difficult. And right, we'll do one right here. And now we can head on the downstroke on the side. So we'll put one close since there is a very slight bend into that. And then we'll come down to here. And then I'm going to come all the way down to here. And again, you can see you can just pull on this until it follows. And I'm going to come all the way out here. Again, click and pull. You can move it up and down so it matches. I can see that that one's not quite working well. Let's do that. Yeah, that one's that one's a little more of a problem. So I'm going to hit undo, and I'm going to come closer. Let's, this one seems to need a little bit more. A little bit closer. So we'll add one right there. And then we'll come over here. Yeah, that allows it to fit a little better. And again, if we don't like how one has drawn, we can always move it. Like I can see already, this one's got a problem on this handle. And we'll come back, we'll, we'll come back to that. Let's just finish our outline first. So I can show you how you can fine tune and move these things around. All right, now I'm gonna come all the way up to here and pull on this one. That does a nice job, right about there. And come all the way up here. You can see even that when this was photographed, uh, there's a soft edge here. So you have some flexibility as to defining exactly where the edge is because it's very, it's almost disappearing. Drag along there. Or you can see we're almost done with this one. And I'll just come up around the corner. We'll drag that. Come about halfway in between and split the difference. And then right to there. And that's got our first outline. All right, so let's back off and we see there's our outline. You're thinking, well, Joe, there's a hole. There was still a piece missing here. No worries, we're still active. So let's go ahead and zoom in to the opening on the handle. And move that over and even zoom in a little bit more. Get our pen tool back and we'll just pick a spot. Again, I'll pick start about right here. And again, I click and drag, come around to another edge. Now that one's a little bit screwy. I'm gonna leave it that way because I'm gonna show you how we can go back up and fix that. And that's pretty good. And I'm, you can see we actually have a little trouble actually seeing where the cup begins and ends about right here. So I'm gonna make a guess. And we're gonna edge back up here. And to cut to the chase, I'm gonna come about halfway up about here. Put a little curve on that. Again, we're putting the curve. Notice this handle is going up to where we are headed. And that one actually was pretty straight. We've got kind of a little interesting hitch right here. So this is going to actually go in this way. And here, again, we pull until it lines up pretty closely. And I think I'll do one more here just to make that curve work. And there we go. Now, this entire thing is now considered... Oh, before I leave here, uh, I'm going to click on the command or control key to activate. And you can see I can activate that. Now, while I'm here, if I hold that down, I can actually move this point. Uh, I can move it. And then let's say, let's move it about right here. And now let's bring in this one. No, that doesn't work. Actually, about right there. Actually, there we go. And then the same thing as you do it, it has a cascading effect sometimes. So let's bring this one up. And again, I'm holding down the control key the entire time through this. And you can see there we get to fine tune. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's command zero to come out of that. So there's our entire outline around the coffee cup. And this thing lives, if you come over to where the layers are over here, this thing lives in paths. And notice it has this thing called work path, which is the currently active path. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. So I'll save the path. And I'll just call it cup outline. Hit OK. And there's the entire thing. Now, this is now just going to sit on paths. And the beauty of this is, since this is created as a mathematical model for what this curve is, rather than a bitmap, it is infinitely scalable. So if for some reason I needed an outline of a coffee cup that was 20 feet tall, 
I could use this and it would scale because it's going to create the mathematical model. It's not a bitmap, so it would never get jagged. So now you're thinking, well, Joe, that's all well and fine. How do I use this thing? Well, here we go, watch. Click on the little menu, the path menu, and say make selection. And we're gonna, we're not gonna feather it. We do want an anti-aliased, which would eliminate any jagged edges at the resolution we're at. Hit okay, and look at that, there's our selection. And it is perfect. If we look at this thing at 100%, there's 100% of the resolution. Look at how clean that selection is all the way around. Yes, you could fine tune it, but actually I'm quite happy with it. And you can see we've got the hole where the handle was. So while I'm here, what I can, I can just go to selection and save this. And I'll just call it cup. So now I have the selection saved. And well, what else? Well, now that that's done, let's make something with this. So here's our image, I just flattened it. So now I'm going to copy our mug, just Command C. Here's an image of the Grand Tetons, one of the famous molten barns with the Tetons behind it. Command V to paste our mug in, and look at that, there it is. Get the V key and I can just move this around. I can see it's the rotation is slightly off. So Command T will allow me to rotate it and let's get it so it looks straight. And by the way, if something looks straight to your eyes, you are remarkably good at that. Look, that was about one degree off and you could tell it was off and just by doing that, that fixes that. Very cool. All right, so what else can we do with this? Let's make, uh, I don't know, make a little advertisement for it. So uh, let's I'll get the V key, let's see, let's put it, oh, let's put it right here. We'll put it alongside. We'll make an advertisement for Cafe Genevieve. Uh, also while we're here, by the way, uh, what I can do, I can, if I click on it, you can see it reselects it. I'm going to click on an adjustment layer. Let's bring, now that we've, remember we darkened it a little bit in order to see the edges. Let's go to levels and let's bring it up a little bit. Let's make it a little bit brighter. There we go. And also, as I notice, I notice there's a little spot on the handle here. If I come way in here, way beyond the resolution, this is beyond the resolution of our image. You see we've got this little discoloration here. So let's get the lasso tool. And I'm just gonna draw around that. And I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut, Function Shift F5, which is Content Aware Fill. Hit that to get rid of our, our little spots. Command or Control Zero to go back to full screen. So what can we do to make this a little more interesting? Well, let's see, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna put it underneath the mug. And I'm gonna hit the D key, I have a brown color in here now, I'm gonna hit D which gives us black and white again. Get a brush, which is again the B tool. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath this thing and since I put this layer underneath the mug, it will show up behind it. Uh, let's paint it about, oh, 20% with our black. And you can see, as I did, notice how it's just darkening underneath. Make it look like there's a giant mug sitting out in the field here, which is kind of weird. We're not going to actually do that. And what else do we want to do? So I'm going to click on the background layer, click on a new layer, and I'm going to put a white graduation underneath this. So I'm going to hit X to switch out black and white. Hit the G key, which is gradations. And if you go to basic gradations, you'll see for, uh, foreground to background is the first one. See, it goes from white to black. Foreground to transparent is the second one. That's the one I want. And I want it to be pure white at the bottom and then gradually fade in. So actually, maybe not. Let's do it right from the bottom. I'm gonna hold down the shift key to make sure it's straight. And I'm gonna have it come up to about here. And let's see what that does. Yes, that does exactly what I was after because I want a little lighter area to put some text here. So let's get the text tool. And I'll click on here. I had already picked out a font that I thought was appropriate, this thing called Wilderness. And I'm gonna call, let's just put the name of the, uh, the restaurant, V-I-E-V-E, -E, Cafe Genevieve and uh, I'll call it Inspired Home Cooking since that is their catch line. And put a little hyphen, Jackson, Wyoming. All right, and I can 
make that a little bigger, by the way, with text, if you highlight it all, rather than come up here and have to change the number when it's highlighted, notice when I put it over the two little T's, which is the size thing up here, I can, with it highlighted, I can drag it left to right and it will show how big the thing is. So I'm gonna make it as kind of as big as it will go. I'll get the move tool and put it here. And since I made that background white under here rather than dark, let's hit the T tool, which is the text. Whoops, I accidentally added a new text thing. Let's get rid of that, that was my mistake. We'll get the T tool, double click in there, and I'm gonna click on the color of the text and just pick up black. And there we go. And there's, and there's our ad uh, with our mug. And you can see when we go up to 100%, which is command one, look at how clean that edge is on that mug. Because again, we used the pen tool to create that perfect curve. Let's go to full screen so we can see our masterpiece. And uh, yeah, every time I see this, all I can think of is I can't wait to get back out there. And that's it. There's a use of the pen tool uh, that will allow you to select objects that have somewhat continuous lines. You're not going to do this on hair, but any kind of object, it's a great tool for creating those selections so that you can composite or just eliminate backgrounds. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something about the pen tool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys online again soon. Bye-bye.